Bellissimo, bellissimo, beautiful Monday morning, ladies and gentlemen. Why is lateness is greatness up this early? Well, let me tell you something. It's because breaking news is breaking around me and it's beautiful. Romeo Lukaku is leaving. It is wonderful. God has given us a sign that our week will be great. Enjoy your Monday morning. Make sure you're productive. This is the working week and we ain't playing no games. We're working hard. Let's get into it. <laughs> Yo people, lateness is greatness, welcome back into the building, you already know what time it is, it's time for another daily dosage, not so daily dosage of the transfer window video series, but I have to get into something more important than bantering about Lukaku's exit, which we have been mugged off for, but hey, at least he's gone. Chelsea Football Club today have announced that Bruce Buck, who has served as chairman since 2003, will be stepping down from his role effective from the 30th of June. So in 10 days, Bruce Buck will be now moving to a support role as a club senior advisor. Now, we was expecting transition, we was expecting change, we was expecting potentially Buck to do this later on in the year, maybe later on in the window, um, and allow Todd Bowie to take that role as chairman. But it's happened today, breaking news in the last few minutes. Wow, we, that's crazy. You know, Bruce Buccaroni is moving to the side. Um, let me read the full statement before we get into the Lukaku breaking news. Also, during Buck's chairmanship, Chelsea solidifies solidified its position as one of the world's elite football clubs and a globally recognised brand, followed by millions. In that time, the men's team earned 18 major trophies, more than any other English club in brackets. Very important that we note that. I love it. The shamelessness. While Chelsea Football Club women's team won 12 major trophies. No brackets there, but we'll get there. The club also grew its commercial revenues significantly, established world-class training facilities at Cobham, and developed one of the best youth academies in football. In 2010, Buck and trustee and chairman as trustee and chairman, helped establish the Chelsea Football Club Foundation, which supports a broad range of incentives, including increasing access to youth athletics, uh, hosting education and employment programs and leading anti-discrimination campaigns. I am proud. This is his statement now. I am proud to have helped Chelsea realize great success on the pitch and make a positive impact in the community, said Buck. Now, it is the right time to step down and let new ownership build on the strong foundations we have in place. The owners have a compelling vision for Chelsea's future, and I look forward to helping them achieve it in this new role alongside our incredible staff, players, coaches and supporters. Bruce has led Chelsea Football Club to the highest levels of international and domestic football, whilst also developing one of our active social responsibility projects in sport, said Todd Bowie. Um, Chelsea Football Club co-controlling owner. We thank Bruce for his service and his commitment to our club. Oh my God. Change is happening all around us, ladies and gentlemen. It is absolute madness. So that has just broke. Let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. Todd Bowie is making bowling ball moves. He is striking and he's not taking any liberties, ladies. But let me get into it. <laughs> <laughs> Romeo Lukaku is leaving and I must say I'm so happy I'm more excited than when he arrived honestly breaking news at the bottom of your screen the 97.5 one year loan deal from Inter Milan is set to expire in the coming days that's right we've reached an agreement after this theft robbery and absolute anarchy in broad daylight we have actually managed to pat ourselves down after being just absolutely prolifically destroyed. I mean, they have literally run amok on us. We have been absolutely taken apart here. But, but, ladies and gentlemen, what do you do when you get robbed on the streets of London? You pat yourself down and you pick up your shit and you move on. And that's exactly what we're going to do, okay? Everybody just look both ways before crossing the street. An iconic video that I put out. We were the ones that got hit. But yeah, a 10 million euro um, agreement has been struck. The green light has been given by Zhang, um, the Inter Milan, uh, I believe, is in the hierarchy in some fashion, you know, but he has agreed, given the green light, he's the owner, um, he is the person that gives the green light, and he has given it, so listen, uh, it's a one-year loan, it would seem uh, we're not getting any player in return, no Dumfries, no Skriniar, no uh, Bastoni, we're also, apparently, according to Fabrizio Romano, we're going to be having the wages covered, we won't be contributing to any of his wages, so he's probably definitely taken a cut, and then Inter Milan will pay the rest, but more details will come out, hopefully, that 
we hear some sort of obligation will be arranged at some point. I think we have to just give massive credit, first of all, to Todd Bowie for getting this deal done efficiently and quickly. If this was Roman Abramovich, as much as I love him, and Marina, I feel like they would have dragged this on. They would have wanted more money back. They would have let this go out through the whole window, negotiating, haggling, hassling. Todd Bowie said, listen, this is a player that doesn't want to be here. Todd, we don't want him here, says Tuchel. We're not got a relationship anymore. So let's get him out of the club as soon as possible. Let's not haggle. Let's not hassle into Milan for each and every penny. Yes, the deal doesn't look good. We've been robbed. We were going to be robbed anyway. Like I said, pat yourself down, pick up your shit and keep it moving. It's better that we get the deal done and not drag on the whole transfer window and mess up the rest of our business by messing up um, with Inter Milan here on this deal. So he goes, and my goodness, I am now free as an individual. I've been complaining about him since the interview dropped in January. I'm not a happy bunny, but I am today and I'm back. I'm feeling free spirited, loved, and uh, I'm feeling lavish. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's a beautiful day. The birds are chirping. The sun is shining. The trees are whistling in the wind. If they do that, and uh, <laughs> just, I've run out of adjectives. I'm tired as hell. It's early in the morning, but I'm happy as I'm happy as a daisy, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, Lukaku leaves, and Chelsea Football Club is back in operation. And now we can go back to having a fluid front three, all pulling in the one direction. That smells like unity. Also, in other breaking news, not so good news, but I guess it was to be expected. We were never going to get away with this absolute treason of bidding for twenty. 5 million euros for Raheem Sterling. That's what we bid. Plus add-ons, it was rejected. That was confirmed last night. Um, initial bid, beginning um, the negotiations, tapping on the door, letting them know that we're here. Raheem, we are welcome. Um, I hope you that you know we're interested is basically what that bid was all about. It, it was never going to get accepted. We know from yesterday's video that I put up, um, you know, that they are looking for 110 to 100 million euros for Jesus and Sterling. Now, it's expected that they're going to want around 60 million from us. Probably we could maybe get that down to 45 million um, plus add-ons, but it will not be probably 35, which was reported yesterday. Um, I really didn't buy that for, at all, that we were going to get Sterling for less than Gabriel Jesus and, and, and way less as well, because I think Arsenal end up paying at least 10 million more than, than the 35. So... Look at around 45 plus add-ons. Um, I think that's what we'll roughly settle at. But that was the first bid. Second bid will come in. What will be very interesting in this negotiation is not just the fee. I think we'll sort out the fee is the wages. Like I said yesterday, Sterling earns about 300k. Is he going to take a wage drop? You would hope he would. I mean, nobody wants to really pay Raheem Sterling at Chelsea 300k a week. Um, our wage budget is as bad as it is. So this negotiation could take some time. I'm not expecting this deal to get done in the com coming days. But there will probably be another bid in the coming days, I would expect, considering they finally put in a bid. It's like being on eBay and the marketplace is dead. Like I said in my title, they were not putting in any bids. We were getting frustrated. Window shopping is what we were doing. Watching, but not bidding. Now we are bidding and it's beautiful. So that was probably our first official bid I can think of. Um, but also I want to talk about is Jonathan Santa Claus. Yes, that's right. The lens. Right wing back now. The only lens I know is the one that should be my eyeball. But uh, here we are, Lens, right wing back, 4-3-4-3. Three, three. This is the formation that we're definitely going to be playing this season if we're going after players like this. It's so clear as day that Tuchel loves this formation. And he's looking at a right wing back, the 29-year-old French international who's called up in the Nations League. So he's definitely earned his, his place. You know what I'm saying? It's not easy to get into that French team. Now, he's only been playing in the top division in France for two years. Um, late bloomer. You know, a few people turned their nose up at him. Listen, we have Mendy that was unemployed at one point. Jamie Vardy won the Premier League after coming from the Conference League. I actually like these players that are late bloomers. They tend to cherish every moment they touch that grass on the football pitch. It is nuts. They just they just really do come with the commitment, the desire, the passion that everybody wants to see. So why are you complaining? And at the price that he's at, running out of contract in 2023, why would you complain? You know, 2023... Contract's running out. He's going to cost around £8.5 million to €10 million. Euros. That was the fee quoted by many French outlets, including RMC Sport. And that's a very low-risk, high-reward you know, situation for us. We're not paying the dump freeze money of €40 million Euros for a player that's going to be rotational with Reese. I feel like that was extensive. That was unnecessary. His contract runs out in 2025. He just signed last season to replace Akimi. This is a lot more shrewd, a lot more calculated, a lot more correct. I like it. Do you know what I'm saying? I haven't watched any of Lens. You'll be absolutely bamboozled to hear. But 
the player from what I've been looking at from a statistical standpoint, he's been one of the best right wing backs statistically in Europe's top five leagues this season. His aerial duels is looking strong. His interceptions is looking strong, which tells me his positional, um, you know, and his IQ, defending IQ um, must be very good. His concentration must be very good. He's obviously experienced, so you would expect that. Um, and he's also got five goals, 11 assists this season. So some of those assists coming from a corner, free kick goal delivery from a free kick as well so set pieces he could give us an extra bit um there as well and obviously when i say that his aerial duels are good hopefully he helps us defend in set pieces as much as he does going forward as well so like i said he looks like a good balanced player going back and forth he's not someone that's lopsided not someone that's going to be defensively incompetent good going forward or crap going forward but defensively competent it seems like a nice balanced individual um and he's a chelsea fan <laughs> he's a chelsea fan so this is just an extra little an extra little bonus on top um, a little extra cherry on the cake, as they say. So it's just a little little Christmas bonus for Santa Claus. That's all this is. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. If if we can secure this player, you know, I think this is a good price. It's sensible. It's it's measured. It makes sense. And you know my preference is to have someone probably more experienced as backup wing backs to Chilwell and James. I don't think we need two young players out there. We can get experience. We need experience in the back line anyway. I know people are, some people are saying, oh, what about Dujon Sterling? Listen, I haven't been watching Blackpool. Again, you must be shocked mad revelations coming from me haven't been watching them extensively however no assists in 22 starts it's not a reese james wigan it's not a mason mount derby it's not a tammy villa it's not a tamori derby um good loan uh, recovering from injury but not everybody's gonna make it and this is not just about just glittering the team throughout with Cobham. If we were spending a lot of money, then I could understand concerns. But this is a very low price for a very experienced player that's currently on a good trajectory in form in the French national team. The chemistry that we could have with Kunde, Santa Claus and Dembele on the right wing, that is wonderful. <laughs> you know, that's all French. That's the French Revolution, ladies and gentlemen. So loads of plus points to this deal. I can't really think of any negatives. So I'm not going to try. And neither will you, unless you do have some in the comments down below, if you know the player better than I do. Not hard. But <laughs> I, listen, I, I think this is a good piece of business. Atletico Madrid are also interested. So let's make a move if we're going to take him. No more watching, monitoring, seeing, securing, visiting, watching, scouting, liking, loving, bidding. Let's bid. Bid. Um, bid for the player. Bid for the player. You know, this is this is very important. But yeah, I, I, I think this is going to be a good addition if we do make it. It's very low risk and I like low risk and high reward. And also, again, like I said, we need experience in that back line. So I wouldn't mind it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Um, like I said, anything that you want to mention in this video, in the comments, do please do. I'm going to respond to all the comments and there's a lot to discuss. I'm quite taken aback by it all. Um, and it's not just because I have had absolutely zero sleep um, over the past 20 hours. So Without further ado, smash up the icons. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I want to see them people subscribing. Please subscribe. Subscribe to the channel, okay? We're pushing for 30K. And it's going to be a double upload today. You're welcome, okay? London Club's carnage is coming soon. So without further ado, I'm going to stop waffling. I might have some waffles, actually. That's a good idea. Okay. Goodbye. Perfect.